Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Leo Oliveira. Uh, I'm a co-founder and CTO of Semantics. Semantics, it is a, a Brazilian company. It uh, was founded in 2007. We work as a B2B startup in Brazil, uh, offering professional services for companies that need solutions in search and big, da big data, specifically solar and Hadoop. We offer training, consultancy, and support uh, for Brazilian companies, and we have all different sorts of customers. Uh, in this presentation here, I'm trying to bring, you, to, bring to you guys the, the most common problem that I have found uh, in search, including search uh, with uh, many, many millions of documents, and sometimes not only millions, just uh, tens of thousands, which have some uh, incredible problems with relevancy, which is one of the most important uh, themes in terms of search uh, these days. Uh, my name is Leo Oliveira. I have 15 years of experience with websites and search engines. Uh, I got specialized in relevancy and semantics, uh, graduated in business management and IT innovation in Brazil. So, about the importance of relevancy, I think that one of the most important things that we have to mention is that it is the game changer in search. Uh, before Google existed, there existed a lot, a lot of search engines out there, uh, Alta Vista, even Yahoo. Uh, the game changer about Google is that it created a way of bringing the relevant results in the first page, which was not really common at the time. Uh, and they found a way to do this uh, in an automatic way without having people determining what's relevant or not, which is, was the game changer. Uh, well, relevancy can be achieved in, through many different types of data. You could have uh, cross-reference, log analysis, you could do social media, market research, new ideas about a product or service. Uh, and relevancy, it's good to remember, it's all about the user. You can't really have relevancy without considering what users uh, have to say or how they behave in your website or your service or software. So it's not about what we think of the user, it's about what the user is actually doing, how is he behaving, and how he's really doing the, the search. Uh, and if you don't understand your data, it's not really good to, to, to find what is relevant, right? So one, one good idea here is trying to find it through research. Uh, researching user behavior, researching user needs, you could do as a market research, or you could just analyze logs and see what they're searching, what they're doing on your website, where they are clicking, uh, which filters they use fastest and everything. This is very important. And one thing to, to remind you about the importance of relevancy is that if a user goes to your website, don't matter if it's e-commerce or a document search or whatever you have, if they don't find what they, they want in your, in your search, they will leave and go to another website and try to see if they find it. So uh, in some cases, you don't have big data, you have small data. But uh, like e-commerce, you may have tens of thousands of products. And it's very common to not having a, a result set. So you do a search and you get a, a zero result query. So uh, it's time to find the right words for the job. That's where synonym, stemming, and other techniques comes into search. Uh, and analysis, of course, understanding what is the user searching for, as I said before. Uh, other options, sometimes uh, it's very common for user to have a typo. Used, Google noticed this a long time ago. In solar, they, we have uh, suggestions that could help you find the right words uh, without giving out zero result queries all the time. And you can create an interface to make it easier so that users can try different keywords to get the results. And also, analyze all the words that are searched together by the same users to create special suggestions. So sometimes users uh, will search for phrases and you have to figure out uh, which phrases uh, are needed to, to get results. Sometimes a phrase like uh, a long tail keyword search or a long phrase will get you a zero result. So sometimes you have to create rules to avoid this. About relevancy, I have, we have some rules that are the most forgotten ones in projects and uh, search applications that I've seen in many websites in Brazil. I'm sure uh, it's the same in many places. One of the things that uh, we figured out that phrases are more relevant than single words. So single words, 
when, when someone types a phrase, they want to see that phrase in the result. It's, not, it's very uh, simple for, you, for us to consider this because this is common behavior in Google. But when you set up a search application, sometimes uh, it is forgotten that how to do this and, and the best way to do this. Uh, pure words, as I say here, uh, which are words that uh, are not changed by synonyms or stamped, they are more relevant than the, the stamped words. Uh, so you have to consider this when building your search application too and, and creating a semantic relevancy that makes sense for users. Uh, and in general, in general, which is, uh, that could change in many cases, uh, newest documents are more relevant than old documents. But this could be reversed. There's a, an example uh, that I worked with. It was a search of a TV schedule, a TV guide. And in this case, what was not, uh, what was the, the let's say, the, the oldest documents, they were more relevant. That because all the dates were in the future. So uh, what which was closer from today was more relevant than what was closer to uh, uh, tomorrow, right? So this, this rule could be reversed depending on what you're doing. Uh, and of course, uh, this day we live, the, we live in the time in which uh, mobile applications are very common. So closer venues and locations are more relevant than distant ones if you have the location of the person that is searching for some information. And uh, one of the most important things, it's giving the right ways to the right fields. And specifically if you're using these Macs in solar, uh, which is a very common solution for search uh, interfaces. Uh, this seems very simple, but it's not. Sometimes uh, people forget what's really important and give the wrong weights to the wrong fields. So, sometimes, which is very common, you have a mix of relevant things. Uh, in any commerce, you must consider the freshest documents plus the smaller, the smaller prices and best sellers. So, we have like three variables and, and you need to create sometimes uh, math formula to cope with all these items of relevancy. That's tricky because uh, like Amazon, you, can, you have a, uh, a sort option that's kind of weird. Uh, the average most relevant products. Uh, actually, they're doing this. Uh, it's a mix of relevant uh, points that they need to figure out which is the most, the most relevant ones. And of course, you can boost each parameter separately. The problem is that when you test your formula you, 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 uh, very well, you, you must test your formula so that you don't prioritize one parameter more than the other. So that in some cases, I've, I've worked with a job search in Brazil, and uh, the freshest job ads would be more relevant than the oldest one, right? And, I, and one of the things that we noticed is that when we created this, this, this rule there to boost the most, uh, the newest documents, sometimes you would get irrelevant results just because it was a new document. So you need to uh, test to figure out the best weights of uh, the date and also the, the semantic uh, relevancy. Now, in terms of relevancy and weighting, when you use this max, uh, which is a very common solution, uh, you have two main options in solar, uh, which is the query field and the phrase field, QF and PF. Well, as I said before, phrase fields should have bigger weights than all of your query fields. This is a, something that, that's not really uh, uh, common when you start doing, seeing search applications out there, which should be. But anyway, field weights must be decided carefully. You can use a scale. Uh, I love Fibonacci numbers. So uh, I try to use it, uh, I, I scale uh, to, to uh, prioritize the most uh, important fields. And there's an, ex an example here, uh, like of a, a movie's website like IMDB, uh, movie name would be the most relevant field because uh, possibly if you analyze the behavior of the users uh, in IMDB, like in, in theory, you would see that people search the most for movie names. So this is uh, an example that in phrase fields, you get a weight of 34 and then actors 21, director 13. That means that uh, I'm doing the Fibonacci scale here, I reversed. And in query fields, I'm using the same fields, but with lower weights. So that uh, when someone searches for a phrase, 
a, a name of a movie that is a phrase, it will get uh, relevant and it will be on the top uh, first page, the top result. And now, I want to discuss a little bit about synonyms. And uh, in terms of synonyms, it's very important that we discuss uh, the synonyms theory versus synonyms in search. Uh, I worked uh, with a company in Brazil that they were building a huge synonym file for all of their, uh, the keywords. It didn't make any sense because they were using a, 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 a thesaurus, a, a dictionary of synonyms. And uh, they were building a huge thing, like you're just copying all the, the, the synonyms, but it doesn't make sense in search, and I'll explain why. Well, uh, in theory, a synonym is a word having the same or nearly the same meaning as another in the language as happy, joyful, elated. So uh, uh, it also it could be a word or expression accepted as another name for something, right? Okay, but in search, well, Synonyms can get complicated. Uh, sometimes you don't need to use only real synonyms, only synonyms that could be explained like synonyms in a dictionary. Uh, sometimes you must focus on user needs, right? So it's not a good idea to use the sorrows. It's a good idea to find synonyms through analyzing user behavior, analyzing what are your uh, top uh, 100 keywords that are being searched in your website or application and then figuring out, sometimes you have to analyze also uh, your top 100 keywords that are returning zero results. Because then you could actually see uh, what you need to actually use as synonym. That would make sense, right? Also, you could use it for other useful stuff, like you could use it for common typos that could be corrected uh, with using synonyms, or even unrelated words that could do the job for you. And sometimes you need to get creative. You just need to figure out a way of using synonyms, uh, even if words that doesn't make sense, but that doesn't make sense in the configuration, of course, when you see it. But in the application, it makes sense. So you need to figure out the situations in order to use it. When you talk about synonyms, there are two things you have to consider. The first one are one-way transformations that I call one-way transformations, no one really call it that way. But uh, I figured out that it's best to, to, to do it and explain it with an example. And here I have a simple one, like if you have a website uh, and, and, uh, and people search a lot of com uh, for the word computer and then sometimes it's a typo, they miss a, a letter like computer uh, and it's a very common mistake and you figure this out through analysis. You could easily create a, a one-way transformation of com computer to computer uh, sometimes this requires expansion, which is something I'll discuss later. Uh, in our setup, we'll set a few type here. Uh, I'll show you guys a few type that I have created in, uh, in, for a customer, uh, for, for two customers actually, that makes sense in this situation so that you can really simplify the way you control synonyms because uh, it's very hard to to keep and maintain a single synonyms file with all the transformations, a one way and two way. So I have created a few type in which you separate the one way transformations from the two way transformations. Uh, like two way, it would be something like this an example, computer, PC, Mac, notebook, server, that could be used in a website that sells computers, for instance. Uh, normally it requires expansion, <clears throat> so we'd use this synonym filter with the option expand equals true. Uh, and sometimes you don't use exact synonyms. For instance, brand names and other real words can be used. Uh, in, this, in this example, Mac is a brand name, but it could be a synonym of computer in some case, uh, in an e-commerce for instance. And uh, it's hard to configure and maintain a one-way and two-way in single synonyms file. So I will discuss this later as I get back to it. So let's talk a little bit about another problem which is very common in terms of synonyms. Index time versus query time. Normally people only use synonyms in query time. That is, when someone searches for something, uh, so it would get that's that, that's that word that's been searched 
and then transform it during search into another search with the synonyms, and then try to search that. Okay, that works. In some cases, it, don't, it just doesn't work. Uh, one of simple exception that I'm using here is when you use like photo album together and photo album separated as a synonym. This is a huge problem when we use, you're using uh, in query time only because this would probably uh, break up the, the request handler and it would generate a, a query string that doesn't make any sense. So when you want to use a, a phrase synonym, this might require an index time synonym to work correctly. Uh, the index time synonym is useful for search also in some situations. Like normally it's very common to use a, a filter in, in solar called word delimiter. And uh, it has many rules of which symbols could be considered a, uh, a delimiter. So sometimes this would break some searches such as C++ or .NET. And uh, you could use a, a simple solution using synonyms in index time to convert these to other strings. And then you wouldn't have problem when you search for this, for this in these cases. Uh, you have to keep in mind that this index time file will have the exceptions that don't work well in query time. And then again, uh, when we talk about relevancy, synonyms, testing, and search, uh, this requires a lot of testing. Now, this is a problem because people love developing new things, but they don't, they don't really like testing all the time and doing a very thorough testing we're, uh, testing with uh, an analyzing uh, first, getting a report of what are the most common keywords being searched, and then really creating a, uh, a test model that you could actually really go word by word, testing it and see what's happening. And not only testing with the words that you think that are important, but actually testing it with words that users are using in your, in your website, in your search application. So you have to keep in mind that to determine which synonyms you use in index time and synonyms that you use in query time, we require you that you do a lot of testing to figure out the best way of using this. So some examples here. Uh, these, are, these are very common, like engineer, engineer, engineer uh, which is a one-way uh, typo. Uh, engineer, <coughs> engineering, it's a two-way. This is uh, something that was very common in a uh, job website that I have done in the past. You want to ask something? So the question sure. is, how do you actually discover these, uh, uh, these transforms? Uh, one way that was uh, uh, popular in the Yeah. Uh, how are you actually suggesting going about this? Well, uh, in my experience, we've done this specifically engineering. Engineering is a very, uh, this is, is a case that I've studied because I've done this in the past. Uh, it's two things. You have to analyze the behavior, but you also have to know what you have in your data and what is your formula. Like in job websites, uh, we did our research and 80% of the searches are job titles. Well, okay, but uh, engineer is a common word in a job title, but engineering it's not, right? Engineering would be a common word in a job description text, okay? So normally your formula would have job title and job description in your main formula, in your QF and PF fields. So we figure out that in some cases, like people would be searching for, uh, let's say uh, one that's very hard. Uh, an uh, electronic engineer in a place that doesn't exist a lot of electronic engineer jobs. So this will normally get you zero result queries. And uh, when you use uh, engineer with engineering, it makes sense because you have that word in job description is very common. So it's not only about knowing the user behavior, but you need to know what you have in your data, what is common in your text, in your text fields. And to figure this out, 
one thing that you could do uh, is actually using uh, anal an anal analysis tools such as Hadoop or with Pig and Hive to analyze your big logs that sometimes you just can analyze it easily. Or other thing that you could do, which is very common, uh, it's try to save this information to a database when people are searching it and then trying to do queries on it to figure out uh, what is going on there. All the, and you could do that in real time or uh, not. You could analyze it in many ways. One most common thing that is very common to do is do a, a weekly analysis of what's being searched and then figuring out the best way to figure the synonyms. And of course, you can have lots of, uh, in this case, you could have other solutions. Even uh, in some cases, uh, a thesaurus is helpful, but it's, it does, it's not really the most common way I'd say it's the best because you could create a synonym that doesn't exist in your data. So it doesn't make any sense. So you need to actually figure out which words make sense and test them all the time and see if that result is still relevant. Because another problem that's very common here, it's good that you asked, is that you could create a synonym that could make your search very irrelevant. So you must take care with this because this is a very common problem. Uh, in Brazil, there's a, a job title called controller that you, you're familiar with, uh, you know this, this word. But uh, in Portuguese, even in English you could say that, that is a, a very common keyword that, that it appears a lot in job descriptions. It's controle or control. So when you use a stammer, controller could become control. So you need to figure out the relevancy so that it doesn't make, uh, like when you look for a controller, it brings a lot of results about people who have to control finance or control uh, servers, control teams doesn't make any sense. So you need to figure out all your words in your data and test it all the time. This is very important. Other example, as I told before, computer, PC, Mac. Uh, in index time, uh, the examples that I've shown you, uh, C Sharp and .NET, that's okay, but one of the things that I have uh, had problems in the past is it was with human resources and HR. In Brazil, we have similar situation for this word and phrase. A lot of people would, do, would put the job title as HR analyst, and the other one would be more complete and say human resources analyst. And that synonym was something that was very important for the website. But uh, it wouldn't work if you do it in query time. So we had to do it in index time, and then it worked very well, and it, could, and it solved the problems when you're doing the search. Business intelligence and BI is also a very common one. And CRM, customer relationship and management, is also a very common one uh, in, jobs of, in job websites. So in bringing this, this case, these are real cases, the real examples of real world that, real problems, right? So uh, this is the kind of thing that I wanted to share with you guys so that you, when you f fall into these problems, you can actually uh, take the right decisions. So to solve all that, I don't know if you can read them very well, but uh, I have created a field type, a sort of a field type that works with semantic relevancy. Um, this is the whole field type. It's very hard to see. Uh, I, I divided in two here. Uh, the first, the, the index part. So one of the things that I want to talk about this field type here, of course, so text Portuguese. Um, and why I'm talking about Portuguese here, even though we are in America. This is very important, right? Uh, Portuguese is a, is a language that, as many other languages in the world, has graphical accents, such as German, French, Spanish. And uh, this requires some special attention uh, of the way that, and the, the order of the filters and the way that you configure this. So uh, first, I must mention that it's very normal to use a white space tokenizer in this case and not the standard tokenizer because the standard tokenizer would normally break the words uh, with symbols too and this could be a problem. So we'd rather break the words with another filter that's called word limiter that we're using down here. Uh, one of the first things that we have to worry about is the stop filter. Uh, stop filter is very important for uh, to avoid a lot of keywords that are not relevant. 
prepositions. Uh, it depends in many cases. In many cases, you have to determine what's relevant or not, but you know, prepositions, some verbs, some words, that doesn't make any sense to index all these words in this, sort of, in this type of field. And then uh, we're talking about index time here. We can create, a, a use synonym filter factory and use it a synonyms index time file. Uh, and then we could go for the word delimiter, which would break the words we're using a lot, lots of symbols such as dashes, plus signs, uh, iPhones, and many other things. And then finally, you would have the lowercase, right? And the, the last two, this is very important to mention the stammer and uh, ask folding filter factory is about removing the, the graphical accent. So, this is also very important because a common mistake with these languages is that some people uh, would use the stammer after removing the graphical accents. That's a common mistake. If you go through the stemming algorithms that, that, they, that exist in many languages, you see that they consider the graphical accents to do the stemming. In Portuguese, this was a problem. We were doing this mistake. And there were a lot of relevant results because of that. So uh, it's very important to remember that the stammer always consider graphical accents. So you must really use the stammer before removing the graphical accents. This is very important and uh, the experience that I wanted to share with you guys. So the same field type in query time, a little bit different. Uh, we, we begin with the stop filter factory, of course, and then we'd use a synonym filter factory twice. The first one for corrections, and the second one for expansions, that, are, that we call expansions. So why is this? Well, imagine that you have, like I said, computer, computer, computer. You need to, to uh, transform computer into computer, right? That's okay. But imagine that you also need to expand computer to PC, Mac, and server. So if you do this in a single file, you'd have to configure for each word uh, many, many times the same thing. It would be very confusing to maintain that. So we figured out this way. You could actually, at first, correct the words that you need to correct or transform, and then expand them so that you don't lose a lot of time maintaining these synonyms files which is actually um, a problem. I would say it is a pain. <laughs> but uh, it's, it's actually uh, very hurtful when you have a big synonym file and it becomes uh, unmanageable. So you really need to figure out a way to do this uh, without really uh, spending a lot of time configuring a lot, lots of different files or a, a huge TXT file of synonyms uh, not a good idea. So this is a good way of simplifying things. And then, in the end, you'd have the same things, the lowercase, the Brazilian stem, and the ask folding filter, which removes graphical accents. Now, another thing that is important to mention here, as I said before, was one of the most important relevant, uh, relevancy rules. It's about having a sort of a, I call, pure here, but uh, it's having a sort of a field that you could use it as a copy field in solar, that is a field that um, would have the same values, but they would have different filters that you could actually use this in order to figure out relevancy and semantic relevancy. So uh, this is a very simple thing to do because this pure te uh, text field wouldn't use synonyms wouldn't use stammer, and uh, it will have, it, and it would also, it could not even use stop, stop words. You could just drop stop words. So in this case, uh, in this example, I kept stop words, but it's very common to remove stop words for the pure field. In this case, uh, you're indexing the information, you're only doing the lowercase and the ASCII folding filter to remove graphical accents. Just to make it uh, uh, plain 
with other keywords that you are indexing and then avoiding the zero result queries because someone is using capital letters. So you need to really put it out on our case and avoid stammers and synonyms and sometimes even avoid the stop filter. So why is this? Well, as I told you before, uh, the what you exact words that users are searching are more relevant than the same words the stamped or with synonyms. So uh, if you create this, this pure uh, field, let's say pure that you don't change, it's a, you change a little bit just to conform to your search, you're able to actually create a semantic relevancy uh, if a very simple way using this max or e this max with the newest version of solar. Um, okay, so practically, imagine that you have a field named product name, okay? Uh, so that you keep the search result se semantically relevant, you would need a, a product name field, of course, and also let's call it a product name pure, right? Which is a copy field of product name. Uh, well, let's keep in mind also that phrases are also more relevant than individual words. Uh, so, in solar config, which is the file that defines, you can define a, a standard QF and PF, you have uh, the query fields for single words. The product name pure would, uh, would need to have a bigger weight than product name. And in phrase fields, the same thing but both fields would have more weight than the query fields. So this is a very common setup, and it works, and it's very good. But then, what will you get with that? Well, uh, relevant results, which is what you're looking for. Uh, now users will understand the results, and synonyms or stem and tokens won't disturb or create noise, which is very important. Uh, in this way, you'll be doing a search that is similar to what the main search websites are doing, including Google, which is actually the, the expected behavior. Every user that goes to your website, your website's not Google, but they expect you to behave like Google. So this is a way to simulate this and, and create this situation, specifically uh, with keyword search. Uh, and especially in document search, e-commerce, internet search, uh, library search, all the situations, a uh, bookstore search, uh, you'd be benefit from that. And uh, you'd be able to find relevant results even in a scenario where with millions or billions of documents. Or a small data too, which is important to mention in a very common situation. I also would like to add, I don't have a slide for this, that sometimes you need to have, as I said before, uh, other variables that would be interesting for relevancy. And then sometimes you need to get a little bit creative because you, you, sh you should have, uh, you could have some sort fields or boost fields that you need to add. And these boost fields would be, let's say, uh, in the case that you need the, the freshest documents, you need a date so that you can actually calculate uh, if it's closer to, to, to the day that, you, that you're doing your search or not. Or you could have a, uh, a geo position, a geo location, so that you could actually find the distance and boost by distance to get the closest venues and locations in situations that you have uh, mo mobile search applications. Or you could just have something totally different and get creative. Uh, do a lot of math. Sometimes people think, well, search is all about words. No, it's sometimes a lot about, a lot of time it is about numbers. And you have to figure out which numbers are important in each case. If you're doing e-commerce, price is a, is a number. Uh, the numbers of sales is a number. The number of times that people click in a, in a product is a number, right? And uh, in semantics, we are partners with LucidWorks. And uh, like for instance, in LucidWorks search, uh, this application that LucidWorks has, they, they even have a, a click boost, right? Like you have to, you can boost 
of what's being clicked the most. But you could be, get creative. You could not only click the most, but uh, like if you have uh, a space where a user can write reviews, you could use the review the most. You could use the, the best stats in terms of the reviews, like the, the products that have five stars are more relevant than the products that have only three or two stars. Or uh, you could get really creative and, and try to figure out uh, a mix of all these things. Uh, let's say make a, I'm sorry, I'm Brazilian. I move my hands here. <laughs> so uh, you, could do, you could use a mix of information that might be useful uh, for your job, for, for the way that you're doing searches. Uh, anyway, as we like to think in semantics, there are infinite possibilities in terms of search. You need to find the best possibilities for your business. And sometimes, uh, as search application developers, this is something that I have to tell you guys. Sometimes you need to get out of the uh, computer software development world and understand a little bit more about the business world, understand a little bit more about the way uh, users behave, understand a lot about usability, uh, user experience, even though this might not have be your specialty, but you need to figure out these kind of things to produce uh, the best results. Uh, I'd love to get in touch with you guys, and also if you have questions, we have, I think, nine minutes. And thank you very much for being here. Yeah, uh, well, testing is very hard. Uh, one of the things that I, I also always recommend is that you get very familiar, familiarized with the, the bug mode so that you can actually check how the score is being calculated with your formulas, which is very tough and, and difficult to figure out sometimes. But uh, one testing technique that I like, uh, I believe which should be the most common ones, is try to, to use your software the way the user would use, right? Try not to test as a developer, like test straight into solar. Try to check the way the users are seeing this data and see it make sense. Uh, why I'm telling you this, this is a good story. Uh, in the past, we, we used to test only using solar application, uh, the bug, right? And then suddenly we'd figure out that what we were seeing in our tests had much better results than what we were seeing in the website. And then we figure out that actually what was going on is that the front end developers, they somehow tweaked the solar uh, variables and they were just, I'm sorry by the word, screwing up relevancy. <laughs> so it's not really, it's important that you test as the user would do. This is one thing that I always mention for developers because we're so used to test as developers that we totally forget about the business. Another testing technique that I think that is important and also is important for business is not only having technical guys testing. So it's good for any company, it's good to have a product person that would be uh, sharing these testing tasks with you guys because it's good to have different eyes in the same subject. Uh, it's important that you don't have only technical people testing because our testing is biased. I am technically, I'm technical too. So our testing are biased. We tend to think that we're right while we might be wrong. So it's a good to have different uh, types of people, different backgrounds to test that. Also, uh, I think it is important to get creative with testing too. Uh, make tests as part of the job, right? Create a task for testing. So not uh, doing tests as, oh, okay, ah, now I need to test. No, it's not in the project, let's skip that. No, you need to really have it as part of the project. 
as you lose a lot of time testing. Normally, you lose more time testing than actually developing this, the, the solution. So it is a, a good thing. Um, and finally, in the end of this, uh, of when the product is finally, let's say, ready to go to production, it is very good that you do the, uh, let's say, when you don't have the user behavior yet, like you're doing a new thing and you don't have, you don't know the user behavior, right? But actually, you've done a lot of testing before putting the user behavior going, going there, right? So one thing that I recommend, which is something that worked for us, is actually uh, save the logs of your internal testing to retest before going to production, because normally you could find other things that you didn't see. So these are the things that I recommend. Good question. Um, very common one in job in jobs uh, job websites, specifically in Brazil. Uh, many international companies that work there they would uh, advertise their jobs in English. So it would be very common to have a situation in which uh, someone would look for, uh, uh, let's say, uh, I'll try to date. I can't even give an example for you guys. Let's see here. If the wireless works. <laughs> All right, it worked. <coughs> so this is one of the job sites, job websites that I have developed. All in Portuguese, but uh, I think the search bar is universal. So it's very common to have a situation in which, uh, in job titles, that you have it in English or Portuguese. So project manager in Portuguese is gerente de projetos. It's similar words, written a little bit differently. So uh, we have a, a synonym for manager, another one for project, right? So also this is also a good example on how you can deal with synonyms in the UI so that the users don't get confused. I'll show you guys. If the wireless works. So here, uh, there you go. You have the results for Gente de Projetos. It brings out 206 results. If you look here on the right, there you go. Kato uh, uses this because sometimes it's confusing. You're looking for something and you find different things, right? So here they show that Gerente equals to Gestor, which is a synonym in Portuguese, and also Manager. So we're doing synonyms here in two different languages. It's very common to have the job title in English. And also projetos equals project, right? Also, let me see if this is going to work. Uh, the relevancy formula would have the same concept that I have told you guys here. So that if I, if I looked for gerente de projetos, the first result was gerente de projetos. But if I look for project manager, what will happen? Let's see. The first one, gente de projetos, is a little bit different, but let's see if we can find one in English here. Not lucky this time. There you go, project manager. So it's relevant, but uh, since these job ads, they are newest, you can see hoje equals today, right? So these are more relevant because of the date. But we can also bring a project manager here, not so fresh, but it's relevant and it's here. So if we come back to the other search again, you will see that that project manager won't appear as the fourth result anymore. You have another agent in the projects. Why? Because we're trying to have the situation in which, like, uh, 
Imagine that you are a foreign person in Brazil and you look for things in English because you want to work in an environment that people speak English all the time. You're not used to Portuguese, right? So uh, if the person searched in English, we would get the most relevant results in English first because we are always considering that what the user types is more relevant than what you're doing with your words. So this is a way to uh, take care of these situations in which you might uh, have a multilingual uh, documents, right? This is important. And solar uh, also, this Finnish solar also has a language detection. So you could use language detection from solar to determine which text field type would use. That's it.